My name is Jenny Dibden and I'm Head of the Government Social Research Service, one of the professions in the analysis function. My days are generally filled with meetings, lots of them. Broadly, my time is spent on operational policy and delivery, leadership and management and GSR. I am currently co-director in Cities and Local Growth Unit, a joint MHCLG and Bayes unit. My job is leading on the delivery of domestic and EU funds and the preparations for local economic shocks. Before that, I worked in a policy job looking after the science budget. I started my career in DWP, where I spent over 23 years working for DWP and its predecessor organisations. I joined as a casual social science research officer on a three month contract. I have probably spent about half my career working in analysis or part analysis roles and half in policy or operational policy and delivery. Government social research is the analytical profession within government for civil servants who generate and provide social and behavioural research and advice. GSR members enable government to understand issues relating to society, groups and individuals and support policy debate and decision making through a variety of approaches, advice and evidence. We currently have over 1,800 professionally accredited members across more than 50 departments and organisations. GSR members come from a wide range of professional backgrounds and disciplines covering the breadth of social and behavioural science. GSR takes a scientific and tailored approach supported by bodies of knowledge and a range of research methods to inform, influence and provide robust and defensible decision making at all levels. Our work puts people at the heart of government decision making by providing expertise in applied quantitative and qualitative design and analysis approaches, evaluation and interventions to solve complex problems. We use this expertise to provide analytical insight to enable decision makers to understand systems, processes and change associated with people, groups, organisations and society, their attitudes, perceptions, behaviours and intentions to inform and improve the quality of strategy, delivery and policy debate decision making. We anticipate and evaluate the impact of government decisions, understand what works, for whom, to what extent, in what context, how and why, why not, and provide expert social research advice and evidence to design, challenge, reduce risk, trial, improve quality and implement government strategy and policy. COVID-19 over the past year has had a huge impact on the demand for social research advice, guidance, interventions and evaluations and we have been able to proactively respond as a profession to this increase. The focus of social research is on society, groups and individuals. Any event that impacts on people will see an increase in demand for social research to support decisions. We are always thinking about and evaluating the impact of interventions, policy debate and decisions on people and society. For example, thinking about how to encourage people back to using public transport and, for example, informing the design and implementation of the UK-wide COVID-19 infection study. Like most people across the country, we have had to adapt to new ways of working and have embraced virtual working. We have redistributed social researchers to support frontline COVID-19 requirements while maintaining the business as usual activities across all departments. There are currently two routes into the profession, although we are looking at alternative routes as part of our new strategy. There is the qualification route. For this, you need an undergraduate degree at a minimum of 2-1 or a 2-2 with a postgraduate degree. The qualifying degree needs to contain around a third of modules covering social research methods training, including quantitative research methods and at least three of the following areas. Literature systematic reviews, qualitative methods, interpretation of data and presentation of results, study design, hypothesis testing and application of ethics to research. There is also a professional experience route which requires an undergraduate degree at a minimum of 2-1 or 2-2 with a postgraduate degree, plus at least four years social research practical experience. This might include working in a research agency, market research agency or specialist research team. 
To enter through this route, you need to be explicit and demonstrate the breadth and depth of your research experience and skills, which should include the same areas previously outlined. Once you have the relevant social research methods training or experience, depending on the route, you can then apply for GSR roles via civil service jobs. GSR also has various recruitment schemes, including the Fast Stream and placement schemes for undergraduate students, both the Summer Scheme and Sandwich Schemes. Once in the profession, there are opportunities across a range of departments to develop your skills and experience. GSR members often work in multidisciplinary teams made up from analysts from across the various professions within government. This facilitates and encourages collaboration at the heart of decision making and provides a more holistic view. As a profession, we have our senior GSR members, our heads of profession and our leadership team, myself, Ed Dunn and Siobhan Campbell, who are involved in various cross-government and cross-profession groups, ensuring social research is at the forefront of activities and allowing us to disseminate information down to our members. We also use the central support team that looks after the GSR and GES professions to bring our members together and share learning. I have five children, so life has often been dominated by child raising. I still go to watch them play sports, lockdowns permitting, but four are now adults and I'm carving out more me time. I've gone back to playing the cornet in a brass band after a 38 year gap and I got back to swimming between lockdowns. It's been great that with COVID you can now book a specific time slot at the pool. It's shown me I can get up early and be on time for exercise. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Five children. Goodness five, me, four, five daughters. Yeah, five daughters. Me. Goodness <laughs> me. <laughs> and you, you wonder why I wear a headset. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very loud, very loud. Well, we won't ask for a corner so solo too. Oh yeah, um, God, no. <laughs> you know, every other people in lockdown have been doing couch to 5K, practicing their instruments, everything. I have literally sat on this chair about 14 hours a day with my cornet sitting there. And the one thing I wanted to do was, you know, improve and I've gone backwards. So uh, oh, anyway, no. it's like... <laughs> <laughs>